Christmas time is here. Time for joy and cheer. Christmas time is a good time of the year. Christmas time is here. Time for joy and cheer. Christmas time is a good time of the year. Hello, I'm the monk mice, and I am the one with the headband, weird kid talking shit. Look at me go, I'm so funny. Fuck out of here, you fucking rodent! <laughs> Shit! Hello, I'm the Red Monk, and I want to apologize for the sweatpants hanging from the ceiling. The light kept on glaring onto the fucking camera, and there was no getting rid of it except for walking off the light. And it is in a perfect location <laughs> to be as easy as possible to take care of. Now, if you ever want to never get called again for a second date, the best thing to do is bring up Magic the Gathering on the first date. These fucking cards are the thing of neckbeards. This game has a very cringy cadence to it. I mean, when you bring up Magic the Gathering, you just think of obese people who stink, who have fur on their chin, just the grossest people. And it is a card game uh, made for the neckbeards. And it is today's topic. Now, I have a mild history with this game. I've never played it above the age of 18. I only played it as a minor, so I can uh, not, I can still experience it and not, you know, uh, jerk off the animated middle schoolers. Because, like, if you're, like, 20-plus playing this game, you are weeb trash. You masturbate to uh, animated schoolgirls. Uh, this game is for those weeb trash people. This game has a very uh, cringy cadence to it. And I, 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 I'm not going to lie, I have played this game before, and I have invested a lot of money in it. But it was my parents' money, because I was, like, 16 when I played it. I have given up this fucking card game. I have I I can say that I do not play this game, but I will share stories of it with you. The game is pretty much Yu-Gi-Oh. You just play cards, you play creatures, and you try to get the other opponent's health down to zero. It's pretty much just you spend as much money as possible and look up combos on the internet. The Easiest way to win every single magic game is to just invest and uh, look up combos on the internet. You know, there's some of the most OP shit you can just find on Google search. And I really, we used to play this game a lot when we were like broke. And like for the first few months, me and my friends played it. We would like go to the store and get these like dumb booster packs and make these bastard decks that were so shitty that were like they broke all the fucking rules. You know, they were like, they were like commander decks with like different kinds of colors. It's, uh, but it was fun, you know? But like, after we started playing it for a few years, you know, people got interested into it and they started like putting, you know, $100 into really OP decks. And it just became whoever, you know, paid the most or, you know, went on the internet and bought the most expensive shit. And it really lost its charm. But I remember, I had some of the best fucking memories. Like, we would. Uh, go to save a lot which is closed now and we would just like ride our bikes around the town and just like play Magic the Gathering on like parking lots in the middle of bumfuck nowhere or in the middle of the fucking woods you know just when we started out and we didn't have like card sleeves or anything we just didn't give a shit we had like car there's like these things they're like plastic packets and you put your card inside the plastic packet to like protect it and once you start using those, the game started to suck ass. Like before that, we'd have these like ghetto cards and penny sleeves, and we would like shuffle them like they're fucking a fifty-six. But 
other thing that ruins Magic the Gathering, the best way to ruin Magic the Gathering is to invest in it. Like, there's these fucking things called playmats, and these things are such shit. These things are so fucking cringy. And once you start playing with playmats, like, this shit is only fun when you're, like, playing with the ghetto cards. Because it's so pay to fucking win. This game is so fucking pay to win. And it's it loses its charm. And all the good combos, you just find on the internet. You know, there's no fun to it. But, like, if you you know, using your devices and, like, building cards out of freaking booster packs and shit like that, it's really fun. And once you start getting these things called playmats, they're, like, overly large mouse pads, and they're such a fucking virgin shit. Like, you are sexless if you own a playmat. That's no... That's no, it's no fire. I'm just saying that these things ruin it because they show that you have invested into the game. You know, it shows that you are committed into it. And you just need to have bad decks and play for fun. And then you see fucking playmats, these overly sized mouse pads that the idea is that you want to uh, protect your cards. You know, you want to prevent damage to your like $200 pieces of cardboard. So you put them on a giant mouse pad. And these mouse pads usually have fucking, you know, middle schoolers that are drawn with big fucking tits. Gross fucking shit. Fucking FBI. Quite FBI will fucking show up. <laughs> Look at this dude. <laughs> Flip. You can see a playmat in action right here. About, I'd say, a heading of 160, you know, southeast. You can see a green playmat getting slid onto a dude's dick as a fat dude uh, flips the table. <laughs> I love that picture. The guy's like, ref, please. And the guy's just like, <laughs> that is a clean fucking photo. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, there was a period of time, right when we started to invest into the game, I, I never, I never Google image searched Magic the Gathering combos. Every time I had a sick combo, I made it up myself. And the sickest fucking combo I'm going to share for you, okay, make sure uh, you uh, give credit to your source if you're ever going to use this. If you're ever going to play this shit game, you have to... Give credit to your source, and that source is me. I invented this sick ass fucking combo. And it's for a zombie deck, and it is infinite everything. This combo is so fucking clean. So it starts with this card called Grave Crawler. And the thing about him is you can cast him from your graveyard as long as you control a zombie. Right? So what you do with this guy is you just keep on killing him. And bringing them back over and over and over again. And every time the enemy dies or gets sacrificed or does anything, you can get a benefit. Right? All you need is one mana per death to bring them back. So the combo. The combo is you get another card out called Diagraph Colossus. And it says every time you spawn a zombie, you get another zombie. Right? Then there's another card called Ashnod's Altar where you can sacrifice a zombie for two manners two manners but there's an extra card called Gemstone Array which is just an extra thing to make the whole thing work but pretty much what you do is you have Diagraph Colossus Grave Crawler Ashnod's Altar and Gemstone Array on the field and then you sack Grave Crawler to uh, Ashnod's Altar and you get two colorless mana and you use that two colorless mana to get Gemstone Array to turn that into one color, one mana of any color alright so you kill Gravecrawler with Ashnod's Altar and get one mana of every color and then with that one mana of any color you bring Gravecrawler back and di since Di Diagraph Colossus is there you get a, a zombie every time you kill and bring back Gravecrawler so what you do, what you do is you just repetitively kill and bring back Gravecrawler. You can do it like 2,000 fucking times and you can get 2,000 zombies. This combo was so fucking crisp. Like, 
Once I made this combo, everyone had a zombie deck. You can get this out if you have like Dark Ritual. You can get this shit out like turn three. <laughs> you can win by turn four. This is a sick fucking combo. Uh, and of course, you have to also have the hunk on the field. This is my favorite card in the whole game. It's the second. This is my second favorite card in the whole game. Just because it's, it's, his tongue is so sensual. He is such a sensual tongue. <laughs> but, uh, this is my second favorite card. We, he is known as the Hunk. We know him as the Hunk. He is the Cemetery Reaper. He doesn't really help for the combo. But, I mean, what's better than a thousand two two zombies? You know? A thousand three three zombies. And this is what this guy does to the combo. He is crucial for the combo. In, he is known as the hunk for his voluptuous tongue. Oh shit. So I have three stories, okay? We have three stories to listen to. And this first one is, you know, like I said earlier, if you're the, above the age of 20 and you play with these, uh, pieces of cardboard, you are a fucking neckbeard. That's no, that's no, that's no, if you are above the age of 20, and I just insulted you, it's okay. It's okay to be a neckbeard, you know? But you are one. That's just facts. That is factual information. So, I was playing against this, I was like, 16 at the time. Or I'm a fucking kid. And I was playing with a guy in his, like, 30s. Right? This guy was, like, 30. And we are sitting out playing, and I was playing my rat deck. It was a deck of rats. You know. Remember this motherfucker? Yeah. So. I fucking whip his ass with my pack rat. I just fucking. I wipe his ass fucking clean. And this. Uh, 30 year old guy. He got so fucking pissed. He literally. He like started. He got out his other deck. Cause he's like 30. He's been playing this game for like 10 years. So. You know. The longer you play the game the more you invest in it, and the worse it gets, right? So we had a super pay-to-win deck, and we're still playing the game. Like, we're at a comic book store, and so he's fucking dead. I'm still in it. My brother's still in it, and some other kid's still in it. But, you know, his ass was wiped clean first. So, uh, he gets over on the other table, and he just starts playing himself. He's like, look! He got, like, really fucking pissed. He's like, look, I can... He actually starts, like, playing out his deck. I'm like, I could have beat you turn three if I was using this deck, you fucking bastard. He's, like, throwing shade. I'm like, my guy, it's a freaking video game. You need to, you need to chill out. He's, like, he's, like, playing himself. He's fucking living. He's, like, in his fucking thirties. <laughs> oh, man, it was, it was very embarrassing to be him. Because we're, like, half his age. <laughs> he's, like, gray hair and shit. And he's just like, I could have won turn three if I was using this deck. <laughs> you little twerp. <laughs> I I feel bad. He got a girlfriend now though. He's fucking hitched. He's a fucking uh, f- ginger. I see him walking around town holding hands with a ginger. So that's heartwarming. But like two years ago, his ass was wrecked via pack rat. The main reason. I gave up playing magic cards is because this uh, ghetto ass skunk weed selling uh, twerp stole all my cards. I- I'm not even joking you. This I had all my cards stolen. This is why I uh, quit playing magic because I had no fucking cards. This is the only fucking card I owned because I had a freaking ghetto ass skunk weed selling twerp steal all my shit. So yeah. I'm not sure, this is a pretty long fucking story, but, uh, I I don't want to give out people's actual names, so I'm just gonna say, uh, T is this old guy we used to hang around with, he's like in his 30s, different guy in his 30s, I know a lot of people in their 30s, because those are the kind of people that play magic cards, so there's this, uh, kid in his 30s, uh, he's not a kid, he's like, he's, he's a freaking delivery truck driver, we would chill with him. I'll name him T, alright? And there was this other kid named D who was like two years younger than me. He was like 15 at the time. And no freaking lie, 
uh, this kid was a dickhole. He was, like, when Rick and Morty came out, he loved Rick. He's that kind of person. If he's such a egotistical, cringy dickbag, this fucking D. This D kid is a jerk. And what he would do is this 33 year old guy who, uh, he didn't have a whole lot going for him. I mean, he's, he's happy, but, you know, he's, he's not married or anything, and he was having trouble with his house. And this, uh, D kid would, uh, was a parasite to T. Like, this guy was, like, 33. You know, I knew this, uh, I knew T for a while. T was a good friend of mine. And he was a, he was a, he was a good kid. He was a good guy. I liked him. But this, uh, D kid really took advantage of him. And, like, had him, like, pay for shit. He would, like, guilt trip him into buying shit. He would, like, make him drive him to work. And he would just be such a, a dick bag. He'd be such a jerk to him. It, it was so freaking sad. It was so sad. So yeah, the the freaking uh, D was a parasite to T, and because you know T was a target. You know he wasn't a a hundred percent on it, so he was taken advantage of. And I mean it's not. I mean if you're gonna like cost someone hundreds of dollars by being like if you're gonna fucking be a freaking sugar mama or whatever, you gotta put out. Like, this kid would just guilt trip and get money off of this ki. So. Eventually, we decided to, you know, cut ties with D because he was so mean. Like, I, I, there were multiple times I would just give him the middle finger. I'm like, hey, fuck you. Like, I would get so pissed at him because he was such a, a cringy narcissist. He was such a jerk. So, at this time, that uh, T guy, who's like 33, he was living at my brother's house, Right? I could live with my brother, and that D was a parasite to T at that time. And at that time, we were chilling out, playing magic in the back, and we had a few people over. We were, you know, chilling out, you know, shooting, shooting the breeze, and your T and some other people were in the front of the house watching TV, and uh, me, D, and I think my brother were in the back playing the card game, the freaking uh, virgin playing cards. And this fucking skunk weed selling, like, 16-year-old punk was pissing me off so fucking much. This kid was pissing me the fuck off. So I flipped him off. I'm like, hey, fuck you, D. You're a fucking dick hole. You're a freaking parasite to T. I told him, I legit told him he was a parasite to T. And I went to go sit on the couch out front just to, you know, calm down or whatever. And they, the other people out front saw that because I was like, this has happened multiple times that I've yelled at this kid. He was such so fucking annoyed. So that's, that's important. So he was p- pissed at me because his little ego was hurt because I told him he was a parasite. So I left later that night and, you know, T, a 33-year-old guy, was living with my brother and he would constantly beg T to stay the night, right? He would constantly beg T to stay the night. And, of course, my brother didn't like that and he, uh, my brother and T would argue over D because this is this is the kind of shit this kid did. This kid was so fucking annoying. And legit, uh, that night he, you know, wiggled his way, uh, put my brother against him or whatever, and he had to sleep over that night. And literally the next fucking day, he left without a trace and stole a ton of fucking shit. This kid legit committed theft. It was so fucked up. Like, my brother and T get up in the morning, and, like, a ton of fucking food's gone. Some shit they had was gone. Uh, they had, like, an old speaker thing that was gone. And the kid fucking robbed them blind. <laughs> this fucking kid. Like, he whined to see over the night, and then stole a ton of shit in the morning, which included all of my fucking magic cards. This fucking skunk weed selling punk stole all my cards. Which, I mean, I mean, big fucking whoop. But, I mean, it doesn't change the fact that that was, you know, money I spent. <laughs> God damn it. God, I hate that fucking kid. But, we have the third and final story. This, this is about a comic book store that we used to go to. 
I'm going to put up a picture of a generic comic book store in the front just to sort of get you enticed into the whole thing. Just to sort of appease your palate on ghetto-ass fucking comic stores. We used to play at this comic book store, and it was so ghetto. It was such, it was like EBT fucking dingy-ass floor. We'd play on those uh, fucking tables. You know those fucking tables that are like fold tables? That store was so fucking ghetto. But we had a lot of fun times there. And we used to go there like every Wednesday. And I don't go there anymore because uh, that this is what the story is about why I don't go there anymore. But, you know, we would just meet up every Wednesday and play these fucking virgin card games. We play fucking virgin playing cards there for, you know, a few hours after school. It was... It was pretty darn diggity fun. I, I enjoyed it. So, yeah, we would play these uh, magic cards there. And, you know, every Wednesday we'd meet up and play. And the group would change. Like, they're still going, and I'm no longer in that group. But, you know, be this kid this day, that kid the other day. You know, whoever could make it. Sometimes someone would be there for like six months. And they'd be gone for like two. Then they'll be back for like a few weeks. And someone will be gone for like a long time and just show up for like 20 minutes and we're like, yo, God, that was, that was some good times. But uh, this story, I w- this story has more characters, okay? Uh, T was there at the time. This is before the whole uh, uh, ghetto skunk weed selling punk stealing our shit. We had T was there. We had like two kids who were kind of alike with mean, this other kid named uh, P. We'll name him P. And P was incredibly uh, weird. He was a character and he sort of had a hate builder for me because uh, P hated the guts. He hated me for shit because he's really into uh, metal music. And if you're into metal music, I'm going to put a time up on the screen for you to skip to it because a lot of people who like uh, metal music uh, don't like differing opinions. So if you don't want to hear a differing opinion, skip to the time on the screen. Okay. So we're at summer camp. Okay. And for a skit, I freaking got my six sugar out. She's on my bed. I call her Bethany, my six sugar. We played the song about like a fucking dead squirrel. And it was fun as hell. So we're talking about music. And this P kid, he's like kind of, I want to say insecure. I don't like that word insecure because it kind of sounds like an insult. But like he wants to be the only one. Like he wants to be the king of the hill. He wants to be like the alpha or whatever. Total freaking roadie dude. On full fucking roadies. So, he wants to be Mr. Music Man or whatever. So, he's, like, kind of bugging me. It just This is mild social, social shit. You know, we're just, this is just conversations, you know? And I'm like, yeah, he talks about all this fucking metal music he likes. I'm like, that's cool, but, you know, I really don't like metal music. It's just not my thing, you know? And he, like, decided that I've killed his child after that. And if you've watched my fucking store about grocery stores and hugs, link in the description, you understand that uh, I don't give a shit. You know, it's just, it's so important to just like all the fucking social, this whole fucking thing about like the reason I didn't like that D kid is because he was an actual parasite who caused he would actually steal shit, he would actually cost people money would actually make people argue with each other. But like, let's say someone has like a differing music taste or a differing political opinion, just like, fucking ignore it and talk about other shit. There's like so much shit to talk about. So, that didn't get to this kid, you know? This is, he's, we're like fucking teenagers and this is like the most important fucking thing in the world that I do not like the music that he likes, you know? So, he got super fucking pissed. And he decided to try to make everyone hate me as well. He started spreading all these fucking lies, right? In the meantime, I don't 
this, I'm just not giving a shit. You know, like I, I don't think it's a good uh, time use to hate and argue. It's just you only got so much fucking time, and to waste it trying to like make people hate each other or make people uh, feel bad for not liking your music style. But this kid, legit. I mean, it was a few other shit. I don't think he liked me because you know he wanted to be you know Mr. Man or whatever. You know he wanted to be the alpha. So he hated my fucking guts, and I think him, me telling him the music he likes, I don't like. That's like all I fucking said. I'm like, this music sucks, man. And I didn't tell him that. I told him in a very blunt way that I'm like, yeah, dude, uh, your music sucks, man. It is cringy. It is fucking stupid. <laughs> I think is what I said. And that just sent him over the fucking line. He started like fucking lying. And told all these fucking stories of how I'm a fucking pedophile. Like, he told this one fucking story. Oh my god, I don't want to repeat it because it's so fucking gross. But he's like making up shit. And we're like 17 at the time. He's like calling me a fucking pedo. Fucking weirdo. And he just lied a ton. And they started to like stop. Like, we would hang out every Wednesday. That's only when we would hang out. Because they decided to uh, start excluding. Like, you know, I became. The private pile. And I I don't I I throughout this entire time, I didn't try to like get back at anyone. You know, I, I said the kids' music style sucks and I'm blunt at times. But uh they started kinda of believing him and we kinda of stopped talking. And I just decided to stop going because they started being kind of a dickhole. And like, you know, I, I have myself to feel like shit. You know, I don't need to have other people told me you know, that I'm shit, so I feel like shit. I have myself to make me feel like shit. And, yeah, so we, I stopped, the last thing we ever did is go to the comic book store. And I don't really miss it because they're kind of dickholes. And these people, you know, people change every time. And right around when they started to, you know, uh, decide that I wasn't good enough to hang around them because some fucking ghetto-ass kid was uh, obsessed and had a hate boner. Uh, they started talking about fucking politics, and that's the only fucking thing they talk about. Like we, like I'm, I'm just sitting here. I, I want to play my magic cards. Okay, and I by, by then, by the time this uh, sh the shit hit the fan, I already had all my cards stolen, so I would have to borrow someone else's deck. And they'd be like, "Oh, whatever." So I'm like playing someone else's deck, and they're like, "Hey guys, huh?" SJWs, am I right? Huh. It's just like, I would never just like give it, I would never like, yeah, whatever. Because you know, why give a shit? You know, like just because I disagree with them and I accept facts that global warming is real, they would constantly have to talk about how much of a faggot I was or whatever. And they would constantly have to talk about, hey guys, did you just assume my gender? And that's when we stopped stop talking to him. Because it's just like, you know, I, if look, it's okay if we have differing political views, let's just not discuss them all the fucking time. And this is something that really goes with magic is, it's so fucking livid. It's such a fucking livid game. Like, I want to go back to that uh, table getting flipped over. It is so fucking, like, lurid. It is so fucking dense with emotions. Now, here is where we get to our conclude. It's just too fucking heavy. Like, the shit, this game. Like, why the fuck are you going to flip a fucking table on someone for uh, whipping your ass in a fucking car game. Does everything in this game feel so fucking serious? Like, when we would play that game, man, it just, it's just too fucking personal. I guess why I like this game, because it's just too fucking personal. But, yeah. I mean, who even needs friends anyway? Well, think about that, like, weird fucking feeling when you say the fact that D was a parasite to T. I mean, there's that whole thing where you're like back three steps. 
where you're just like not giving a shit. And then like when someone's trying to be like a victim whore to you or whatever, you get like heaviness or whatever. And this fucking card game kind of brings in that heaviness a bit. I don't know. I just it's not it's not it's not very carefree. And like it kind of reminds me of that story of that fucking ghetto ass skunk weed selling kid, and how much of a fucking parasite he was, and how like uncarefree that was. And how uncarefree it was that that kid had a fucking hate boner for yours truly. Or how, like, uncarefree it was it that that guy in his fucking thirties played his own, played himself to prove that his deck was better than mine. I don't know, I don't like this game too much. It's like so fucking pay to win. It is so fucking pay to win. And that fucking D kid, that fucking parasite, and I'm actually saying parasite. Because we're talking like three digits, like almost a, th- I'd say about 450 in total is what he uh, stole from T. Now, I would say, I would say stole because he would just, uh, uh, you know, T-, T would give him stuff and he wouldn't give it back. And you know, T eventually cut ties with him. He eventually cut ties. But he and that's just what he stole from freaking T. He fucking, he stole my fucking magic cards. And that's like so, like, uncarefree. And it's so freaking lucid. And that's why I don't like this game. It's just too fucking lucid. Or the fact that, you know, we would be bothered enough to, like, stop talking over fucking dumb fucking words and dumb fucking musical opinions. And the fact that, uh, you know, we're not. It's just like, we just need to like be happy, man. Like, you only got so much fucking time. And we need to, I don't know why that fucking happened, you know. They were kind of dicks anyway. Like, I'm kind of happy I stopped talking to them. Like, they were jerks. But, that is our story. Thank you for watching. Give the pale kid a summer, ooh, baby!